Okay, we're going to uh, do some electronics today, and we won't have to spend a lot of money. We need a resistor and we need a capacitor, and that's all we're going to do today, a resistor and a capacitor, okay? And we'll kind of go through different levels of doing electronics. I'll kind of teach you if you're a beginner or just a hobbyist, maybe what do you want to learn from a resistor and a capacitor. And then uh, maybe you're a bit more curious and you want to learn some uh, of the simple math behind a resistor and a capacitor. And then we'll go one step further and say, okay, uh, now I want to be an electrical engineer. What do they do? What, what, why do they do all those things? Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look. I've got a, a resistor and I've got a 555 timer. And so I'm looking at the uh, 555 timer and it's coming out of a 1K resistor, okay? And so this is the output into my scope probe of a, a 1K resistor. And uh, it's basically not doing anything. The 1K is just looking at the output and we're just getting a square wave, right? All right, so no, no, no tricks there. Uh, I, can, I can adjust my 5.5 timer to make it go slower and faster. Okay, no, nothing there. All right, so then uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, let's go ahead and put it on a, a piece of paper so we can be very formal about this. Uh, okay, all right. So what we're gonna do is we'll have our 5.5.5. Five, five. And we have a 1K resistor, okay? And we looked here, and that's what we saw, square wave. Now we're gonna put a capacitor, okay? I'll put a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor, all right? And uh, so we've looked at this before. I had a series on high-pass, low-pass filters, and, and this is just a high-pass filter. And I've actually swept out a Bode plot and did a bunch of fancy things with this. And but that's called AC anal analysis, okay? AC analysis, what happens when you go AC through this thing? Well, AC through this thing, AC on this side, AC on this side, but this acts as a low pass filter. It lets through low frequencies, but it blocks high frequencies. High frequencies will start to go through the capacitor and then you'll have a, divi a divider between these two and when the reactance of the capacitor equals the resistance, you have 1K, 1K, you'll only get half the voltage out here. So we looked at AC analysis. Today we're gonna to look at transient analysis, okay? Transient analysis means that you put a square wave uh, through your circuit. And so we will take our capacitor, I don't know, this one's fine. Uh, we will take our capacitor and we will put it to ground, there we go, okay. And then we'll take a look at our waveform and there we go, we've, uh, we've rolled off the edges, right? The edges are roundy. And what is it doing? Well, it's charging up the capacitor and then it's discharging the capacitor, okay? We've talked about that before. Uh, charging up, charging down. All right, so if you're a beginner in electronics, that's sort of what you need to know. If you put in a low pass filter on a square edge, um, it will roll it off. You can kind of think of that also if you'd like, that square waves are made out of an infinite number of sine waves. So that's kind of like the next step, kind of the electrical engineering step is, is that the edges of square waves is the high frequency content and the bigger port pieces of the of the square wave or kind of the sine, just kind of, if you round up everything, you kind of end up being a sine wave. And I've talked about that before. Um, anyway, so we have this uh, reduction of high frequency components of our, of our square wave and it rounds them off. Okay, so, so that's fine. And uh, we've used this kind of filter for power supplies and stuff. So there's lots to learn just from an RC network. All right, so, why does it have that shape? Well, what's special about that shape? Does that shape change? I'm gonna move the, uh, move the frequency here. And if you noticed, the shape actually doesn't change. This part of the waveform stays the same regardless of the frequency that I'm, that I'm using, okay? So uh, it's different, right? That shape stays the same. 
So there's a couple questions that you might want to know. Well, what is that shape? Is the shape always the same? How do I know what that shape is? Do I care about the shape? Um, and so one of the first things you learn in electrical engineering is there's an RC time constant. What does that mean? R, RC time constant, RC. Well, RC means R times C, resistance times capacitance, is some number. So if you have a 1K resistor and a 0.01 microfarad, you multiply those two things together and you get a time constant. Seems very strange. How do you get units of time? We'll talk about that, how you get units of time. But um, you can kind of zoom in on this thing and you can say, oh, well, yeah, okay, well, what is it? What is it? Why do I care? What is this RC time constant? Okay, and so let's go, let's go take a look at that. All right, and we will have R and C. R times C equals 1,000 times 0 0.01 times 10 to the minus sixth, okay? Sorry, 0 0.01 times 10 to the minus sixth, okay? And um, you can just use your calculator if you like. We could do some just moving the decimal places around, but I won't do that today. We'll just say 1,000, and then we'll say 0 0.01 e to the minus six. So that's 0 0.01 microfarads. I'm gonna multiply those together and I get this number. 10 to the minus six, okay? 10 times 10 to the minus six. Um, and it's actually seconds. Okay, all right. What does that time constant mean? 10 microseconds. Another way to write that is 10 microseconds, okay? Minus six is micro. So I have 10 microseconds. My RC is 10 microseconds. Let's look at our waveform. What does 10 microseconds mean? What's special about 10 microseconds? All right, so I'm gonna change the horizontal sweep until it's 10 microseconds per division. So every, every division is a microsecond. And I'm gonna take this little start right here where it starts to, get, starts to charge up. And I'm going to count 10. Oh, there's 10. Well, how far did it go up? Well, it went up that far. Hmm, okay. And then remember that it charges up and charges down. So we can use our scope and we can say, I want to trigger on the falling edge. Okay. We can look at the falling edge. And there's the falling edge. Okay, well, let's line that up on something. All right. Okay, 10 microseconds is right there. Okay, well, what's special about that? Okay, so to make math easier, I love making math easier, okay? Let's take out that capacitor and we'll get back our square wave. And then we will set the amplitude of our 555 to exactly 10 volts. So two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. I've already done that, but I can just grab my, I can grab my power supply and I can just adjust it so that I have about 10 volts between the two. Then that just makes the math easier, right? That might be a little low, let me rig it up. Yeah, a little bit higher. That's about, that's about 10 volts difference between the high and the low, okay? Let me put my capacitor back in the circuit so we get that nice, that nice discharge there, all right? And let's think about the amount, okay? So if we do it in percent, this is 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. So we, we finally discharge the, uh, capacitor all the way to 100%, right? 10, 20, 30, 40. I mean, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, uh, 100, right? So 100%. And um, what happens at 10 microseconds, which is our RC? This is our RC. Oh, I just touched the damn screen. Um, the touch screen on this thing is sometimes good and sometimes bad. Okay, anyway. So here's where 10 microseconds is, so it's 10, 20, 40. I mean, ah, 20, 40, 60. I got to count right. 20, 40, 60. So it's about 60% lower than it started out. So one time constant, it dropped by about 60%. Let's look at the uh, rising. All right. After one time constant, 10 microseconds, 
20, 40, 60, about 60. So about 60% um, of the way is one time constant. Well, how many time constants to get all the way up to the top? Well, one, two, three, four, five, out of six, seven, a bunch of them, right? It takes, it takes many time constants to actually get to, uh, get to where it's flat, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's eight. You can see it's just, just now starting to get there, right? It takes a lot of time constants for it to get all the way to the top. But um, sometimes it's interesting, interesting to know what happens after one time constant. And that's a number that people just memorize. Um, okay, so I can go to a book and I'll show you a book here, but I can go to a book and it says 63%. Here's the number to remember, 63%. So if you're a hobbyist, that's, and that's the only math that you need to know, one time constant is 63% and you're done. You don't need to learn any other math, it's fine. <laughs> that's the one thing you need to know, okay? So after one time constant, it's about 63%. Now, is it not exact here because our values aren't exact and everything? Remember, things just need to be close um, for us to be doing things in the garage. And yeah, okay, 63%. All right, so that's kind of at a hobbyist level, okay? So let's go one step further. Let's say that we're a little bit more interested in electronics, and so we want to learn and so we're going to do what m guy says, and that's to get a book <laughs> and read about it. Okay, so I'm going to get out my book. This is my uh, ARRL book. And here it talks about capacitors charging and discharging, right? And uh, can we see these things? There we go. So it gives us this, this uh, fancy equation here. It says this is how things charge up. This is kind of an ugly, ugly equation. We'll talk about it. And uh, it says if you're at one time constant, uh, you get 63.2% of the way there. Okay, so this is kind of a, a fancier way to take a look at these numbers. Okay, all right. So let's talk about this a little bit. Let's get rid of the book. All right, all right, so time constants, uh, this camera is in the way and not in the right spot. Okay, so it's got a number here. It's got e to the minus t over rc. Oh my God, math. Okay, and one time constant, let's say t equals rc. Okay, and if we, if we put in RC here, then we have E to the minus RC divided by RC. RC over RC is one, so we have E to the minus one, okay? And if you get out your calculator and you put in minus one and you take E, you get 0.368, okay? But remember our equation, it had one minus this. Okay, one minus this. You get 63.2%. Okay, so that's where, that's where that 63% comes from. It comes from when you have an equation like this, e to the minus t over rc, and t is rc, and you get this minus one value, and um, you get this 63%. Okay. Great. So now you want to go a step further. Okay. Now you're a little bit smarter. You say, okay, I know my 63% and I know, I know all about RCs and I know where the 63% comes from. Wow. I can maybe even derive the 63%. Okay. But why is, why, if this is seconds and this is RCs, it needs to be seconds over seconds for this thing to work. How can R's times C's equal seconds? Does that make any sense? Well, what is R? Well, let's see. Let's talk about the C first. What is C? I'm sorry, I got interrupted. C is going to be Q over V, okay? The capacitance is the charge divided by the voltage, okay? That's an interesting thing. You also know that voltage is equal to current times resistance, 
All right, well, that's interesting. So what is R then? R is just a uh, voltage divided by current, okay? R is voltage divided by current. So now we have Cs and we have Rs, all right? Well, what is current, okay? What's the definition of current? Well, current is how much charge travels in some time, okay? It's Q divided by T, okay? The amount of charge that, tr that, that travels in a time T. That is the definition of current, all right? And so R was V over I, okay? So we have V over I, but I is Q over T, so we'll have Q over T. And then we had C, which was Q over V, all right? And guess what? The V's cancel, the Q's cancel, and the T comes up, and you end up with T, you end up with time. So that's how you get, how, that's how you get resistance times capacitance equals seconds. <laughs> it's because of all of this, because of these simple equations. So there you go, there's one step further. Um, you're getting a little smarter now, you're becoming more of an engineer. Uh, you're learning that these fundamental constants, these fundamental equations, capacitance is charge over voltage, current is charge over time, resistance is volts over current. These very, very fundamental things allow you to look at things like why is RC a time constant, okay? And so, and so there you go. All right, so what if you're an engineer and you wanna go a step further, okay? And probably if you go into engineering school, this is probably one of the very first things you have to do in class. Why is it an exponent? And why does electric engineering have so many exponents? They seem to be everywhere. What's up with that? And logarithms. Like, we learned that, that a logarithm, a natural logarithm, you know, LN, okay, so let me get another piece of paper here. Okay. So if you, have, um, if you have x equals the natural log of a, okay, um, and you, wanted, you want to solve for a, you can say, okay, well that's the same as e to the x equals a. This would actually be e to the log, e to the log a, and e to the log is just the thing. So, e to the x equals a is the same equation as x equals log a. And, and this is one of the reasons that you see so many logarithms and so many exponents in electrical engineering. The other reason that you see exponents and logarithms all the time is because of calculus. These are fundamental numbers of calculus. So why do electrical engineers need to learn calculus? Um, it's because calculus is the study of rates of change. And when things change with time, it's a very difficult mathematical problem. And Newton knew that when he was trying to solve orbitals and stuff. And these rates of change need to have special math. And calculus is these rates of change, okay? And these funny numbers, logarithms and exponents, have come out of calculus. They're, they're numbers that just fall out of calculus. If you look at the integral of 1 over x dx, okay, that's actually the logarithm of the number. Log, I think, plus a constant. Um, but um, 1 over x is a very common thing. And if you look at the rate of change or the integral, okay, this would be the integral, the, the, the accumulation over time, you get a logarithm, okay? And if you look at the derivative of things, you'll get exponents, or sometimes you need to undo the logarithms and you'll get an exponent, all right? So I'm not gonna do it here because I don't think my channel really cares, but if you take a look at the circuit, You have a battery, you have a resistor, and you have a capacitor, okay? If we call the voltage of the battery E, sorry, battery E, and then E 
equals the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor, right? So this voltage here is the same as that voltage plus that voltage, okay? And if you go into engineering school, we'll talk about Kirchhoff's laws and all this stuff. Oh my God. Anyway, it's just, if you have a voltage here, you have a voltage across those two and it's just that plus that. Okay, fine. That's all you need to know. You need to, you need to know this, okay? And then you start needing to learn um, if you're charging this thing or you're discharging this thing, it's a rate of change. Something is changing, okay? And so you will have delta voltages with time. You'll have delta charges with time, okay? You will have these delta things. And if we look at a capacitor, then it's uh, its voltage is actually, um, uh, remember the equation, where did it go? Remember the equation, okay? C equals Q over V, okay? C equals, C equals Q over V, okay? So V is Q over C, so this is, this is Q over C, and then voltage is I R. Okay, so that's also the current through the resistor, actually through the whole system, right? The current goes all the way, but it's the current times the resistance is this voltage, and then charge over that. And if you have, if you put in deltas, if this current and we go back to our other equation. Remember, current is charge over time, and this is resistance, and this is Q over C. So um, if the charge is changing with time, and the resistance is constant, the capacitance is constant, but you have charge changing with time, and you can create a differential equation with all of these terms. And this differential equation will have an R and a C in it. And you will end up solving this differential equation and you will get, <laughs> you will get that. That is, the, that is the solution to that differential equation, all right? And like I said, I'm not gonna do it here, but, um, the reason that the equation looks the way it is, you will get a, a logarithm minus a logarithm equals to e to the minus trc. You, get, you will get, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't do that right. You will get, when you solve that equation, you will get a logarithm, a logarithm, and an rc, okay? Why do you get a logarithm? Because the term will have a one over a one over x in it. This one will have a one over x in it. When you take these, uh, when you take these uh, these integrals, you'll end up with a logarithm, and you'll have a constant out here, and you will have an equation that looks something like this. And then when you want to get rid of the logarithms, you you, you put an e here and an e here and an e here, and uh, you will end up with this equation. You will have um, e to the log is just the thing, and e to the log is just the thing. You will have a thing minus the thing equals e to the minus r over c, and this is actually voltage, and this is a voltage, and then this is equal to e to the minus t over rc. And this is the way that, that differential equation is solved, okay? Um, so, on my channel, I try to be really, really simplistic and keep things at a very, very minimum. But I don't want to discourage people from becoming electrical engineers also. Um, so I kind of want to give you an insight of how much detail you can go into just looking at one resistor and one capacitor, okay? You can learn uh, rise times, you can learn uh, RC time constants, you can learn the equation for the voltage versus time, and then if you become an electrical engineer, you'll actually be able to solve that from fundamental principles using calculus to get those actual, those actual equations and stuff. So 
So now I leave it up to you. Which, which, which do you want to be? Do you want to be the hacker, the tinkerer? I just need to know that you put in a, a, an R and a C together and it makes it roundy. Okay, fine, great, perfect, you're done. <laughs> well, I'd like a little bit to know a little bit more. Okay, well then learn what a time constant is and why you might care about a time constant. Okay, great. Well, I want to learn a little, little bit more. Okay, well here's this nice equation of voltage versus time for a charging equation. And um, it shows you how you get to a 30, uh, 63 percent uh, RC time constant stuff. Great. Well, now I really, really want to know. Well, then go take calculus, go to engineering school or physics or whatever, get a science degree, and then you really, really will understand where this term comes from. Then you'll understand that these are just approximations and are first order equations. <laughs> they don't account for temperature. They don't account for the chemistry of the capacitor. They don't account for internal heating of the resistor. Uh, they don't take into account the rise time of the square wave. Um, and then you will find out that the more you know and the more you understand, the least you know and the least you understand. Um, so you get to go as deep as you want.